Hello and welcome back to my channel. Um, if you saw my last vlog, um, you'll have seen that I have just recently done an ultra and I'm actually in training for one in another two weeks. So that one was kind of like an actual training run for this one in two weeks because this one is a lot hillier and a lot, lot longer. Um, so if you, if you haven't watched that video, go watch it now. Um, but it was essentially 35 miles, even though they advertised it as 34, and I think it was about 4,000 feet of climbing. The one I've got in like two weeks time is 55 miles, and I think nearly 6,000 feet of climbing. So quite a lot tougher. I actually did think that 35 miles was quite a long way. Like it's obviously a long way, but it really did feel like it in those last few miles. Um, so I'm interested to see how I will cope with 55, um, but I'm doing it with my dad, so it should be, if anything, just like a nice fun day out, and fingers crossed we get the weather like this, because it's really nice. The, the last few days have been horrendous, and it's up north, and it's never sunny up north, so chances are it'll be me. Um, but anyway, I thought I would do this video on like my tips for recovery after doing these long runs, and yeah. Because it's, I'm kind of, my body's used to volume from Ironman training, but I think running really does take out of your body and it's definitely been a bit of a learning curve for me. Like, I think I have to be a little bit more on top of things than I would normally be. Um, so yeah, I haven't touched wood, suffered with any niggles this time around for training, um, but there's definitely bits where I've got really tight and I've kind of like had to quickly intervene. Um, so my first one is the um, cricket ball for your feet specifically, rolling your feet. So you don't actually need a cricket ball. I know a lot of people freeze a bottle of water and then roll the feet on that because then obviously you've got the coldness as well. Um, I'll show you a bit of a routine I do with it now. But yeah, you literally essentially just roll your feet backwards and forwards on it. If you get a trigger point, just kind of hold it on there or maybe like go back and forwards on that particular bit. It's literally making me wince at the, the thought of it. It's that painful. Um, but yeah, your feet really do take a battering. Um, on the kind of point of your feet as well, like really daft stuff like just making your sure your nails have been cut and things like that because you lose a lot of toenails such to go very black very quickly um so yeah just looking after your feet in general um would be like my top tip but like i said just literally roll backwards and forwards obviously the beauty of this is you can apply as much pressure or as little pressure as you want um so yeah, that is number one. I've now actually started doing this after every run because I've noticed that my feet, I, like, it almost feels gristly in there uh, on the arch. So yeah, that is my number one tip uh, if you are doing more mileage. Kind of following on from that, number two is um, foam rolling, massage or theragoning. Um, I'm really lucky that I've got a theragon um, because Quite frankly, I do not have the time nor the money to spend on a masseuse in London as frequently as I would need um, while I'm doing all these miles. So I'm using the Theragun on like the big, you know, mus in the belly of the muscle. So like on my quads and my glutes and my calves, um, like right in the middle in the thick bit because it's quite intense, um, the Theragun that is but you can essentially get the exact same thing from foam rolling. You are just literally rolling backwards and forwards on those problem areas. If you kind of get like a sticky point, like a, a trigger, like it feels like a knot, then just sit on that area for a bit. Um, yeah, so, but if you can get a massage, that's even better than both of these. But I actually would really highly recommend the Theragun. It's really expensive. I mean, caveat this with, I was very kindly gifted it. But I actually would, having now used it, probably invest in one because if you think it probably works out cheaper in the long run if you are getting massages. So yeah, that's number one and number two. Again, following on in this kind of, um, I guess the same kind of realm, um, for me, the biggest things I've noticed is my hip flexors. I sit down at my desk for like 10, 11 hours a day, every day. 
um, and my, which is like the worst thing you can do after a lot of running and my hips get so tight. So I'm kind of now daily doing a hip flexor routine, which is definitely um, preventing any injuries in my lower back, knees or ankles. Um, I'm a big fan of Mike Boyle and his joint by joint approach. Um, so yeah, it's basically just making sure everything's doing um, the right thing and starting with your hips, making sure they're not getting too tight because that is kind of where problems transfer to your knees and lower back. Number four is nutrition. Um, like I'm a good eater anyway, but I think, like I said, running seems to take so much more out of your body than you realise and especially when you're doing the really long runs and you are practicing your nutrition so you're maybe eating on the go and eating like i tend to eat like bagels and bars and stuff and you always feel a bit like ugh, i'm literally just eating nothing but sugar and like carbs and like gross like you don't really always feel that hungry when you come back um but your glycogen stores will still be depleted and it's not about feeling like you necessarily need it straight after but if you then want to get up and train again um, you really do need to replenish those stores. So it is like the quicker you get the food on board, the quicker you recover for your next session. Um, so yeah, it's coming in, even if you don't really fancy it and making something, but having something quick. So I often come in and make a protein smoothie. So I'll have banana in there um, for like the glycogen, a bit of potassium and have it with a scoop of protein powder and some greens and that just means you're getting like a load of nutrition in straight away and if you're not really that hungry you can then as long as you've had that in you can wait till your next meal um so here is kind of like an example of, of the recipe that i would make and i love it and it's so easy and i make it really thick like a mcdonald's milkshake and it is actually the best thing ever okay so my favorite quick um recipe that i have see as i come in before we like head out to brunch or whatever um you want some ice I'm running very low, so I'm going to be basically using all of it. I like them really thick, like a McDonald's milkshake, so if you don't want them that thick, go easy on the ice. Okay, next you want a banana. The key thing here is that you need to freeze it before. Please remove the peel first though. Like, I know that seems like the most obvious thing in the world, but apparently it's not. People get that wrong. I then put a spoonful of yogurt in. I like the 5%, the, the full fat stuff. So just like a big heap teaspoon or tablespoon. Probably not, probably not a tablespoon to be fair. Um, and that just helps it go a bit creamier. And obviously you get some fats in there as well. Next, and I add a scoop of protein powder. I use whey, and everyone's on a bit of a vegan hype, um, but basically any any brand of whey I like. Then you want loads and loads of spinach. I prefer frozen, but I don't have any at the minute, so I'm literally just going to use the whole rest of this bag, which is pretty much a full half. Um, just put it in. Yeah, and then can get closer with this. Then you want to add some milk. I use O as well, so a bit more carbohydrates. And I mentioned earlier, the whole point of this is like to replenish your glycogen stores. So that's another good way. Or you could put a spoonful of oats in, whatever you fancy. Uh, and then I top the rest up with water. And then that's it. Uh, so this is literally just what I have immediately um, after I've come in from a run and then I'll make a proper meal later or I usually head out for brunch or something if it's been a long one. Um, and then my last one is sleep. Now I am the worst sleeper ever. I really struggle um, and I just naturally do wake up really early even when I want to sleep in, even when I'm exhausted and it generally takes me a while to get to sleep but I have been really making an effort to get to bed earlier because if you're getting up early even if you're not getting up early but the sleep that you get before 12 from what i understand i'm not a sleep expert is the important sleep um so i've actually been trying to like aim to get in bed for like half nine um which can be challenging when you work late and then train late and then have to cook and do adult stuff 
um, but if you're quite strict with it, I just really notice a massive difference and with my recovery. And that's one thing that I do think um, like this kind of routine has been helping. Like I did that ultra on Saturday, last Saturday, which was my first ever ultra and then got up on Sunday and ran 11 miles hilly and was pretty fine and then went straight back into a training week um, with like one rest day. So I think that kind of is a, like, you know, reassuring to know that my body is responding to it well and I'm doing the right things and I'm recovering. Um, so yeah, hopefully these tips work for you as well. Um, and good luck if anyone is up in the mileage for marathons or ultras or whatever. Um, I know not loads of things are going ahead, but it seems to be like the ultras are sneaking through this kind of like weird no race period. So um, drop me a comment if you are training for something, let me know what you're doing. Uh, also, if you've got any other ultras that you'd recommend, um, I know there's a few on my list. I'm recently an ultra X ambassador, so I've kind of got Sri Lanka in my mind for March if we can travel. Um, but yeah, let me know. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful. Um, please let me know if you've got any questions or any, any um, requests for future videos and I will see you on the next one.